Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health bringing you another episode of Science Powered Fitness. Today we're going to talk about the sacral base orientation, uh, nutated and counter nutated mechanics or the sacral slope um, and how this is associated with your back and potentially how it can lead to some back pain issues. So first thing we want to show you is the anatomy. Um, we talk about the sacrum, it's really this fused portion of the, the lower spine. Uh, the discs and the vertebra sit on top of it and it supports our body weight. So essentially the whole canister, our, our trunk, our head, our arm sits on this base and it's supported between these two halves of our pelvis. So our pelvis is super important because the way that it organizes itself dictates how that center of gravity or that primary fulcrum is going to be supported. So what we want to do is uh, bring our awareness up on how we position our hip bones as we're moving because its orientation is going to have a big impact on the base and then by extension how the, the discs and the vertebra sit on top of it. So really that's the idea. So what we can do is classify movement into two gross patterns. We can weight our body on one leg or we can swing our leg forward. And in order to advance or propel our leg forward, we have to have stability. And that means that this joint has to be loaded. It's called the sacroiliac joint. Now again, the hip bone, it's also referred to as the anonymous or, or pelvis, right? It's gonna rotate backward when you load your limb. So that's gonna go backward. And then the sacral base is gonna tip downward. See how it tips? Now I'm making this pretty exaggerated. You only have about a couple degrees of movement here. It's should be really, really stable. But there is a little bit of a range of motion there and it nestles itself into this little groove. Now that's called a force closure, or excuse me, a form closure. So it means that the ligaments and the bone structure support that orientation. Now there are muscles that support that action. And again, that's referred to as nutation. It just means nod down and the sacral base is nodding down. When we say that you're excessively lordotic, that normally means that the sacral base is more horizontal or more knotted down. If your back is, again, hyperextended or lordotic. Now, if it's more flat or rounded, we would say that the sacral base is more upright or vertical. So a vertical sacral orientation, otherwise known as counter nutated backward. Well, what's interesting is that the body moves in a nutated, counter nutated movement as you shift your weight side to side. So that means that the sacral base will go in and down on the loaded leg and will go up and back on the unloaded leg. So you're actually transitioning into that joint position as you shift your weight. Now the problem is if you overexert more pressure for weight bearing on one side, because then you're gonna tax the muscles and the structure to support that. And sometimes what that does is it creates some strain on the muscles that limit that action and that can create pain. So introduce, via Mr. Google, the iliolumbar ligament and the QL. So if you can see that little guy right there, that's called the iliolumbar ligament and it attaches your bottom lumbars to your pelvis. And then you have this little muscle on top of it, it's called the quadratus lumborum, it attaches the pelvis to the five lumbar vertebra and this 12th rib. So both of those structures, primarily that iliolumbar ligament restricts that nutation mechanic. So the tipping down of the sacral base. So it keeps it from tipping down. You can kind of see that, how if it was tipped down, it would have stretched that ligament there. And the problem with that is that that ligament helps to support this orientation and it keeps the hips really stable and the lower back stable. And sometimes if we irritate it or sprain it, elongate it, it creates hypermobility and then chronic pain can ensue. So ultimately what we want to be aware of is if we're overloading one leg over the other because we have inefficient weight transfer because our body has predispositions towards gross patterns of movement that may lead to impairments like this. So again, you just keep on loading one structure till it gives out and you start getting micro traumas and inflammation and eventually a clustering of syndromes or, or symptoms that lead to pathology and, and then you have to go get it checked out. So the goal is to acknowledge why the mechanics are happening on the body, why it might be creating this issue, and then restore the biomechanics so that we divide the forces equally on both sides of the body. So just a little tidbit of wisdom today. If you have questions on any of this, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Remember, this does not uh, substitute medical guidance, so get it checked out if you have pain 
And again, your body is designed to move, so learn how to move so that you can be efficient and stay in motion. And let us know if we can help. Talk to you soon.